welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. Today I have a super fun video. I'm going to share with you 20 hacks to lose weight that actually work. Now some of these you may already know, some of these may come as a bit of a surprise, but these are literally 20 weight loss hacks that are proven to work and help you lose weight. So if you wanna hear what hacks I have for you today, stay tuned. Number one will come as no surprise to those of us on WW, and that is track your food. Whether you are on WW or not, find some sort of way to track your food. It could be on a piece of paper, through a calorie counting app, like MyFitnessPal, or Lose It. It could even be done through iTrackBytes, which is a spinoff of the WW app, but find a way to track your food. There's no other way to know if you are on track staying within your calories, points, macros, whatever it is that you count, unless you track it. So take some time every day to track. Now, if you struggle with tracking after every meal, pre-track your food for the day. Put everything that you're anticipating eating into your tracker at the beginning of the day. And worst case scenario, you have to go back in and make a few adjustments, but at least your food is tracked and you can make sure that what you're planning to eat falls within what you're supposed to be eating to be successful on your weight loss journey. Number two is only eat when you're sitting down. Don't eat when you're standing up. People who eat when they're standing are grazers. We tend to graze around and just kind of grab food, shove it in our mouth while we're standing, doing dishes, preparing dinner, whatever the case may be. Make sure that you are in a seated position, preferably at a table when you go to eat. This also helps alleviate the tendency to snack while we're cooking. All those bites, licks, and tastes add up to calories, points, macros. So make sure that you're sitting down, you have your meal in front of you, you're enjoying it instead of standing and eating. Number three is eat a decent, filling, good for you breakfast every single day. Don't skip breakfast. It is true, my friends, that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. While we're sleeping, our body is in a fasting mode. So generally, when we wake up, our body needs some fuel to get us going, get us started for the day, and to carry us through to our next meal. So eating a breakfast that is well-rounded, all the food groups, a starch, a protein, a healthy fat, is going to keep you full and satiated, and you're a lot less likely to snap on not so good for you foods because you're starving before lunch gets here. So make sure that no matter what, you're eating breakfast every day. Number four is eat something before you go to the grocery store. Don't go to the grocery store hungry. This is where we get into trouble. I've been in trouble. I go to the grocery store hungry, I grab something that looks healthy, I get in the car, I scan it, it's way out of the points that I want to spend on an indulgent purchase, so eat. Eat before you head to the grocery store. That way you stick to what's on your grocery list. You're not tempted to pick up some of those not so healthy, high point, high calorie snacks. Number five is eat your salads, but avoid those high calorie salad dressings. There really isn't a whole lot of dressings on the market that are good for you. And the ones that have good ingredients like the Primal Kitchens or the Tesemes of the world, they're still really high in calories. Try to avoid milk-based or creamy dressings. Those are the ones that are really loaded with calories and fat. Try to stick to a more vinaigrette style of dressing and better yet, make your own at home. That way you can control the ingredients that are going in there. You're making sure that you're not eating less desirable oil that are in pre-packaged salad dressings. One of my favorite dressings to put together, super easy, balsamic vinegar, avocado oil or olive oil, whatever you have on hand, a bit of Dijon mustard and a little bit of salt and pepper. Whisk that up and you have a two smart point salad dressing if you're only using a teaspoon of balsamic and a teaspoon of olive oil. And you're also getting in some healthy fats. I will be putting out an all things dressings video, so stay tuned for that but it's always best if possible to make your own dressing. Now, if you're out to dinner or you're at the grocery store and you need salad dressing, go for the vinaigrette. Number five is have a goal, have a why. Make it attainable and make it short term. It's always better on any type of weight loss journey to have goals in mind. And sometimes those goals can be way out in the far distant future. I wanna lose 100 pounds, 50 pounds, 
I want to exercise seven days a week. Those are maybe not attainable right now goals. So make sure that the goals that you're making are attainable right now. They're doable now. Maybe you want to lose one pound a week, or maybe you want to work out three times a week. Make some goals, stick with those goals, and that's gonna get you one step closer. Next is bulk up your meals with zero point foods, fruits, and vegetables. The zero point foods are designed to be the basis or the foundation of your meals. So use them. Use chicken as the base of your meal, bulk that up with some veggies, and then add whatever type of pointed food that you want. Maybe that's some rice, some quinoa, some french fries, a potato, whatever that may be. But use those zero point foods, your veggies and your fruits as the basis of your meals and really bulk up the quantity of food that you're eating with fruits and vegetables. Your mind is going to tell you that you're eating a lot of food, but your stomach and your weight loss is going to know that you ate low calorie, good for you, or maybe even zero point foods. Watch your portion control on the zero point foods that are a little bit more calorie heavy, like your meats and your Greek yogurts, but really bulk up your meals with zero point foods, fruits, and veggies. Next is don't snack between meals. And if you have to have a snack, make it a healthy one. Drink water. Sometimes we think we're hungry, but really we're just thirsty. So just make sure you're hydrating, drinking a lot of water between meals. You can even chew gum. It gives your mouth that taste. It makes your taste buds think that you're eating, but it's not putting any calories into your body. You can also sip on hot or iced tea with no added sweetener. Again, your mouth is getting that flavor like it's eating food, but you're not ingesting any calories. And also make sure you're not eating when you're bored. If you find that you're feeling snacky, find something to do. Take a walk, get a glass of water, go watch your favorite show, find something to do, and wait 15 to 20 minutes, and if you're still hungry, then go have a snack. But make sure that whenever you're eating, whether it's a snack or a meal, you're truly hungry. The next one, is a big one and one of the main reasons that I love the WW program and that is in order to lose weight, you guys, we need to eat all three food groups, carbs, protein, and healthy fats. And preferably we should be having all three food groups with every meal. So if you are going to have a snack, let's say that you wanna have a bag of chips for a snack, make sure that you're pairing that with either a healthy fat or a protein. So maybe toss in a cheese stick or a hard boiled egg. Or maybe if you're feeling like having a rice cake, top it with a little bit of your favorite nut butter. Make sure that you're eating the main three food groups with all three meals. It's never good to cut out a food group in, in its entirety everything in moderation and your biggest success losing weight is going to be eating from all three groups. Next is have a simple workout plan that you can actually stick to. Don't go guns a blazing and say you're gonna work out seven days a week because you might, but the likelihood of that and life getting in the way is more likely to happen than working out those seven days a week. So set up a workout schedule that you know is doable for you every week or most weeks. I know life happens, but set up a schedule that you think that you can stick with at least 90% of the time. For me, I like to work out Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then I like to throw another day in there if at all possible, but I guarantee myself a workout every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That is a schedule that I know that I can stick with, and I give myself that open availability to pop in another day if that's what works out with my schedule. But pick an exercise you like, set up on a schedule you can stick with, and do that exercise. Next is meal prep. And you guys know I am a big proponent of meal prepping. I do it every single week. I know sometimes meal prepping just isn't in the cards. So make sure that if you're not meal prepping, you have easy, healthy meals on hand, snacks and meals. When you buy your bag of pretzels at the grocery store, come home and immediately bag it up into individual servings. When you buy a big tub of cottage cheese at the grocery store, come home and divide it out into half of a cup serving. So when you're hungry, you grab a bag of your pre-portioned pretzels, you grab a container of your half of a cup or your one serving of cottage cheese, and you enjoy your snack. This is going to help you from overeating when you're hungry and also just having meal prepped food or food that's healthy and easy to grab and eat is essential. Otherwise, we find ourselves roaming our pantry for bags of chips that we can grab, boxes of cookies, ice cream bars, whatever your vice may be. So make sure that if you're not meal prepping, which is ideal, then you're having healthy food and snacks ready to go. Next is wear a step tracker. Wear some sort of fitness watch. 
It is going to buzz, beep, vibrate at you every hour if you haven't hit 250 steps. It tells you if you're active all 12 hours of the day. Whatever time frame you set up on your fitness tracker, it's going to remind you to get in some activity. And it's also going to track your activity. You can see your resting heart rate, what your heart rate is when you're in the peak of your workout. It's just a great way to stay motivated with activity. There are tons of challenges and groups that you can join, whether you have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a Garmin, whatever fitness tracker you have, there's groups and challenges that you can join to keep you motivated. I know for me, I like to see those fit points go into my WW Bank on my app. I love to see that. I also like the confetti that falls on my screen and the vibration when I hit 10,000 steps every single day. So having some sort of fitness tracker, I think is really important to keep you motivated to keep moving. The next one is Uber uber important and this is one that I have to live by. This is my ride or die and that is make sure that you get rid of any trigger foods in your house and better yet, don't bring them in your house in the first place. Now you guys know that I use my weeklies once a week. I'm a sweets lover. So usually once a week, I want something sweet, but I have learned over my weight loss journey that it is not smart of me to go to my local bakery and buy a dozen chocolate chip cookies. It's better for me to go to my local bakery and buy one chocolate chip cookie that I can indulge on the day that I use my weeklies and I'm not bringing those extra 11, 10, however many cookies into my house that's going to call my name later on when I'm trying to stay on track. So just avoid bringing the foods into your house that trigger you to overeat. So we're certainly not likely to get in our car and drive to the store to pick up our trigger food on a random day. So if it's not in your house, you're going to instinctually reach for better options, healthier options. And again, remember we have snacks, prepped on hand and ready to go. So keep the trigger foods out of your house. Now the next one is quite interesting and this I actually really like and this is try to stand for three or more hours every day. So if you are editing a video, then stand and do it. If you're on the phone, stand up. If you're watching TV, every commercial, stand up. You are going to burn an extra 150 calories a day by making sure that you're standing three or more hours every day. I think it's a great goal to shoot for. And remember, if you have a fitness tracker, it's going to track if you're moving every hour. So the movement of getting up and standing and maybe pacing around is going to add some steps to your fitness tracker as well. So I like this idea and I think it's super doable no matter what type of situation you're in. Just make sure instead of sitting, you're standing to do some of your regular daily tasks. Next is eat a lot of fiber. Not only does fiber help keep you regular, I know, TMI, but it does. Also, 30 grams or more of fiber every day is going to make you feel satiated and full, and it is proven to help in weight loss. You can get fiber from so many good whole foods. Some of those are almonds, apples, bananas, avocados, chickpeas, you name it. Most fruits, vegetables, and whole grains are going to give you a big dose of fiber. It's going to help you keep full, satiated, and regular. Next is make sure you're getting enough sleep. Seven to nine hours of sleep is ideal. When we are sleep deprived, our body produces cortisol, which triggers our brain that we're hungry. And we're far more likely to overindulge and snack on some of those not so healthy foods when we're sleep deprived. I know I am not reaching for the broccoli when I'm tired. I'm reaching for the sweets, the chips, the foods that are going to give me that immediate little bit of sugar high, but that I have an immediate drop from there. It's just not healthy and it's not going to help you in your weight loss journey. So make sure that you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep every day. I promise you it's going to help you overall lose the weight that you wanna lose. This one is really, really important and that is don't skip meals. Don't starve yourself. Don't eat less than 1200 calories a day. Don't skip meals. Make sure you're eating at least three meals every day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And if you're hungry between breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, make sure that you're having a snack. Don't starve your body. We definitely don't want our body to go into any type of mode where it feels like we're not going to feed it. It's then going to hold on to everything that we put in our body, which is going to stunt our weight loss. It's important to keep your body going, your metabolism going by eating enough. If you starve yourself, you're going to ruin or drop your metabolism and you're going to really struggle to lose weight because your metabolism is so 
far gone. So make sure you're constantly fueling your body, keeping your metabolism rev, and making sure that you're not eating the not so healthy foods because you're having your at least three well-rounded meals every day. Get your chocolate fix, my friends, but do it in a healthy way. Back to kind of the cookie scenario. Don't go to the grocery store and buy a whole bag of your favorite chocolates. I love the Hershey's milk chocolate. I really like the little mini ones. If I went to the store and bought an entire bag of those, they would be gone within a couple of days. So for me, I buy chocolates that I can portion out. I'll buy maybe a big bag of chocolates and I'll pre-portion out what I wanna have every day. How many points, calories do I wanna spend every day on my favorite chocolate? Don't deprive yourself of your favorite foods, just pre-portion them out and have them available in portioned amounts so you don't overeat. Now, if you are a chocolate lover, try cacao powder, cacao nibs. Those are chocolate from nature that are actually really, really good for you. I love adding cacao nibs to my oatmeal, to my smoothie bowls. They add that little bit of crunch and that chocolatey flavor, and it's actually really good for you and really good in smart points. So if you want chocolate, my friends, have chocolate, just have a portion of it. Next is move for a few minutes every single hour. You heard me right, every hour. Every hour, get up and move. Now, I'm not saying go run around the block, go on a walk, go do a jazzercise workout. I'm saying just move your body every hour. Get up, pace your house. Do a lap from one end of your house to another. Go outside and walk the perimeter of your front or your backyard. Just get some sort of activity in every hour. It keeps our body going, it keeps our muscles going. We never want to be so sedentary that we lose the muscles that we have, and we also don't wanna be so sedentary that we're not even burning enough calories to offset what we're eating. So make sure by just setting a little alarm on your phone, on your alarm clock, maybe on your computer, wherever you spend the majority of your day so that it reminds you to get up once an hour and just make a move. A little move is better than no move. This next one I love and I am the queen of this and this is finding healthier alternatives to your favorite foods. You guys know that I am the queen of this. I find non-WW friendly recipes, I tweak them and make them WW friendly. I would not be able to stay on this journey if I wasn't able to have my favorite foods. I don't wanna feel deprived. I don't wanna feel that I'm on a diet. I want it to be a lifestyle and something that I can stick with. So I find my favorite foods and I find a healthier option. So for example, I love French fries. Any kind of French fry, regular fry, waffle fry, sweet potato fry, you name it, I love it. So for me, instead of buying a bag of frozen fries, I'm gonna make my own at home. I'm gonna chop up a sweet potato, I'm gonna top up, chop up a red or a yellow or a Yukon gold potato, I'm gonna throw them in my oven or my air fryer, season them the way I want them seasoned, control the oil, control the salt, and I'm still going to be able to have French fries, just a healthier version of them. This is going to help you sustain long-term. It's going to help you turn your weight loss journey into a lifestyle that you'll stick with, therefore the weight you lose will stay off. And number 20 is put your workout clothes out the night before. That way when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you see are your workout clothes. If you're stuck at home, then go ahead and throw those workout clothes on, do what you need to do around your house, but it's going to be a visual reminder every time you look in the mirror or look down that it's time for your workout. So this is something I've been diligently doing since I've been working from home and the success has been amazing. I've been getting three plus workouts in every single week. So put out that visual reminder first thing in the morning that you have a workout on your schedule. So that is it my friends. Those are my 20 hacks on how to lose weight that actually work. I will type these hacks out down in the description box for you so that you have them at visual when you click on the description box. Also in the description box you're going to find my website where all of my recipes that I've ever made since starting my YouTube channel can be found. Also, you'll find the discount codes and links to some of my very, very favorite things. And you'll also find the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of that community over there. And speaking of community, I'd love to have you be part of my community here on YouTube. And in order to do that, if you go ahead and hit that little subscribe button, and that bell, you'll be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Make sure you're part of all the communities that are offered. It's free support, it's loving, it's a place that you can feel safe to share your journey. Tips, tricks are shared all over my Facebook group and here on YouTube, so make sure you join us at both 
communities. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if these 20 hacks are going to help you on your weight loss journey. And down in the comments, share any hacks that you have that may be beneficial for others. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, I'll see you in my next video.